Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video. So the case that I have for you all today is a very tragic, sad situation that really should not have happened the way that it did. It's one of those cases where we can see exactly why it happened and how, yet it still genuinely does not make any sense. I am really looking forward to hearing what everybody thinks at the end of this one. Today, we will be discussing the Kane family murders. Teresa Kane was married to a man named Stephen Kane, and together they had two children, Ethan and Samantha. Teresa was originally from Connecticut, and Steve was originally from Georgia, and I believe they both had lived in Georgia for some time. I'm not exactly sure where they were when they met or how they met, but they did move around a little bit. When Samantha was really young, the family moved to Philadelphia, and then when she was six, they finally moved to Ohio. At the time of the incident, Teresa was also caring for her father, 84-year-old William Felton, who was living with the family. And unfortunately, I don't have any pictures of him. I don't think there's been any shared with the media, so unfortunately, I wasn't able to find those. Either way, the family ended up in New Richmond, Ohio, New Richmond is a small town with a population of around 2,700 people. Those who live there say it's the type of town where everyone knows everyone. If you were new to the area, people knew that because even if you weren't close with someone, everybody knew who each other were. Upon moving there in July of 2015, Teresa and Stephen purchased a two-story, three-bedroom home located on three acres of property for around $212,000. Stephen was born on May 25th, 1972, and he, again, was originally from Augusta, Georgia. He was 50 years old at the time of his death. Stephen was described as loving nature and baseball. He loved writing poems, and he even had written 13 books, several of them being published. He loved to sing and play guitar, and he had played guitar in several bands throughout his life. At the time, just before his death, he was the lead member of a metal band called Critical Chaos. At the same time, he worked as a safety and environmental manager for a Cincinnati R&D facility. He was described as having a gentle personality who was always happy and made everyone around him feel comfortable and accepted. Those around him also described Stephen as a wonderful father. When he joined his metal band, he told the band that he didn't want to use curse words or vulgarity in their music. He also told them that if he joined, it would be under the condition that he got to be home to tuck his kids in bed at night. Ethan was only 13 years old at the time of his tragic death. Ethan was born on September 14th, 2009 in Augusta, Georgia. He was in middle school attending New Richmond Middle School. He was described as an A student who worked hard in school. He always wanted to do his best on any assignment and he wanted to make sure that he always got his homework done. He was quiet and polite and a very sweet young boy, but he still had his fun side to him. He loved telling jokes, swimming, and playing video games. He was shy but loving to those closest with him. He was loved by other students and teachers where he went to school because he truly was just the sweetest kid. Samantha was 20 years old at the time of the incident. Samantha had been a sophomore student at Northern Kentucky University at the time, and she was a member of the Delta Zeta sorority. She was studying psychology and criminalistics. Samantha was also known to be a very hard worker. She's a strong young woman who would go out of her way to help anybody. Even through any tough times that she would be going through at the time, those around her said that she would still always go out of her way to help anybody that she could. Teresa was a stay-at-home mom, so Stephen was the sole breadwinner of the family, and those who knew the family said that Stephen worked his absolute butt off to provide for his family but Teresa was the one who handled the financial duties in the house, such as paying the mortgage, utility bills, and overall budgeting for the family. Overall, the family was described as your normal, typical family. But after this entire incident occurred, some family members and friends came out to talk a little bit more about how Teresa was as a person and as a mother. Family members described Teresa as being a bit quiet, introverted, and a little bit difficult to have a conversation with. When you spoke with her, there wasn't ever a lot said. She really just kept to herself. But some others who knew the family also described her as controlling, being sort of a helicopter parent. Many family members said that they hadn't seen the Kane family in over a decade because 
they felt that Teresa had shut them out completely. Some people even said that she prevented 20-year-old Samantha from getting her driver's license. Don't exactly know why, but some people think that that's just because of how controlling she was. She was said to be very strict, even to the point of telling her children who they could and could not be friends with. The family also had just recently gotten a new golden retriever puppy, and to those on the outside, it seemed like a completely normal situation of a family getting a new puppy. But some sources stated that Samantha actually got her mom, Teresa, that puppy because Teresa had been in sort of a funk. So I guess that sort of highlights the mental state that Teresa may have been in, saying that she was in a little bit of a funk. Maybe she was dealing with some mental health issues. Now, like I said, the family's budgeting and financial duties were the responsibility of Teresa. Turns out that the family was actually going through a lot of financial difficulties, none of which she informed Stephen of. In May of 2022, after being very, very behind on the mortgage, Freedom Mortgage Corporation of Indiana, who they purchased their house through, foreclosed on the family's home. We don't know the exact situation with the mortgage company, but from what I've seen in the articles and research that I have done, it seemed like the mortgage company is pretty difficult to deal with, so we don't know exactly how long, you know, Teresa had been behind on the payments. We don't know how much warning she got. We don't know how much back and forth there was, but it does seem like this mortgage company is a little bit difficult to work with. They have one to two stars, depending on what website you look at for reviews. Some people have left reviews saying that they almost feel scammed by this company. One review from June of 2023 states, quote, Freedom Mortgage is a scam of a company. They will attempt to get you to refinance every time rates drop a quarter of a percent. This would result in you adding more money to your loan than you would end up saving in monthly payments. I was overpaying taxes by about $200 per month. They tried to sneak this in and say that I would be saving that much per month by refinancing when in reality, I'm reimbursed anything additional that I paid at the end of the year. I called and tried to have my mortgage reduced by $200 a month because I was overpaying in taxes. They declined to let me reduce my monthly payments without refinancing. I now just pay $200 extra every month and have to wait for them to reimburse me $2,000 at the end of the year. Do not lend from these people. So the reason I'm telling you this about the mortgage company is for a couple of reasons. First of all, it can show that maybe they were just very difficult to deal with. Maybe they weren't notified of being behind on payments right away, so maybe they didn't realize that they were so behind. Maybe they were just very difficult to deal with, so they just avoided dealing with them altogether. Or maybe they couldn't afford the mortgage payments anymore because of this refinancing mess. Or maybe they were charging them higher rates or something that was just very difficult to deal with. But either way, we do know that the family was in financial strain and Teresa was not paying the mortgage for one reason or another and she definitely did not want her family to know about this. Either way, after the company foreclosed on the Kane family home, they started the process of hiring a moving crew to start moving the family out of the home. And as happens in most eviction situations, the company contacted the local authorities and told them about the eviction so that, you know, authorities could help them should the family be uncooperative. We've seen a lot of situations where things get violent and, you know, these repo men are just trying to get the stuff out of the house and the families, you know, respond violently, respond with their guns or whatever. So local authorities are typically called to, you know, avoid or mediate that type of situation. So in early February, authorities notified Teresa that the family was being evicted and that they needed to pack up their things and move out of the home. Police told Teresa that they needed to be out of the home by February 27th. Now, Early that morning, on the 27th, police showed up to notify Teresa that today was the day that they needed to be out. At this time, she was still being cooperative. She said that they still had a few things to pack, so she requested a few extra hours, but she said that they would be ready to vacate the property by 10 a.m. She assured the officers that she and her family did have somewhere else to go. That was a big part of the case. They wanted to make sure that the family had somewhere that they could go, that they wouldn't just be out on the streets. And Teresa assured the police that they did have somewhere else to go. So police agreed 
They turned around and left, planning to return a few hours later. By 9.40 a.m. the same day, police arrived back to the home on the morning of February 27th to serve them with their civil papers. They were told that they needed to be out of the home by 10 a.m., and so at that time, the police expected no issues. Teresa had been cooperative. She gave no signs of pushback or anything like that, so police expected this to go very smoothly. However, as they were pulling up to the home, they saw Teresa sitting on the porch when she suddenly got up and ran inside of the home, closing the door behind her. So, deputies went up to the front door to knock and nobody answered. Then, they went to one of the back doors to knock and still nobody answered. So, the deputy started opening the door, announcing that he was coming inside. That is when he heard the muffled sound of someone calling out, no, 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 followed by very fast succession of gunfire. Deputies said that there were five shots fired in under three and a half seconds. Then, all sounds suddenly stopped. So, of course, after hearing this, deputies started making their way further into the home to see what was happening. They went upstairs, and that is when they found Teresa lying dead next to her 13-year-old son, Ethan, who was also dead, as well as her 74-year-old father, William, who had also been living with them in the home. They had all been shot to death with a single gunshot wound to the head. Then, officers went downstairs to the basement, and that is when they found 50-year-old Stephen lying on the couch, also dead from suffering a gunshot. Again, each family member had been shot to their head. Then, 20-year-old Samantha was found after being shot as well, but she was still alive and in critical condition. She was immediately taken in an ambulance and transferred to the Cincinnati Medical Center for treatment, and there she remained in critical condition. So, at the scene, responding officers noticed that there was nothing in the house that had been packed. There were no boxes anywhere and no signs that anybody had planned on leaving that home. Immediately, police were under the idea that no one in the family knew about the impending foreclosure. Teresa wasn't preparing for it and neither was anybody else in the family. Clearly, Teresa had kept their financial struggles a secret from the rest of the family. Now, at first, police thought that this shooting could have been a spur-of-the-moment situation where the police showed up for the second time, she ran inside and made the snap decision to kill everyone. However, upon further investigation, it appears that she actually planned to commit the act. Turns out, on the morning of the eviction, Teresa called the middle school that Ethan attended and told them that Ethan wouldn't be coming in because he was sick. So, she either wanted to make sure that he was home at the time to shoot the members of the family, or he had already been dead that morning before the police ever even showed up. Based on where the bodies were found throughout the home, it did look like Teresa had shot each member of the family in their heads while they were still awake, minutes before police even showed up. So, this could have gone one of two ways. Either she woke up that morning, shot everybody, and then during that first initial police visit, she was just trying to buy time to figure out what she should do before they showed up again. Or it was after this initial visit with the police that morning that after they left, she went inside and shot each member of the family with a 38 caliber revolver, murdering her 13-year-old son, 50-year-old husband, and 74-year-old father, and gravely injuring her 20-year-old daughter. Then, she went outside and sat on the porch, waiting for the police to arrive once again. Then, when she saw them arrive, she ran back inside. Police say that they think that these five shots in quick succession and her yelling no, that those were warning shots and she was trying to get them to leave. But when they continued entering, that's when she shot herself. So, again, it could have gone one of two ways. She was either planning it when the police already showed up that morning or she had already done it when they had shown up that morning and she was just trying to buy herself time. Of course, after news came out about the murder-suicide, family members, friends, and those around the community were absolutely shocked and dumbfounded. Stephen's sister, Wanda, said that she never had any indication that the family had been struggling financially. She said that Stephen worked his absolute butt off to provide for the family, so she had no idea where the money could have possibly gone. 
Some people think that maybe Teresa had been spending the money elsewhere and keeping all of it a secret from the rest of the family. But we don't really know. We don't know where the money went. We truly don't know if Teresa was doing something with the money behind the family's back and that's why she didn't want to tell them that they were struggling financially or if something else was going on and she was just feeling overwhelmed that, you know, Stephen wasn't bringing home enough money. Maybe she didn't want to go to work or something like that and that's why she kept it a secret. We truly don't know what was going on behind the scenes. Meanwhile, the rest of the community were really hurting from the whole situation. One school official who knew Ethan said, quote, he took over a piece of people's hearts here at the middle school. There was no shortage of Ethan's stories. We did not see this coming whatsoever. There's so many unanswered questions. I can't phantom a logical reason that would be sufficient enough to do what she did. At New Richmond Middle School, Ethan is being remembered as a quiet and beautiful soul. A wonderful, wonderful kid. Um, teachers and staff members were in, in tears today. Just like just a, a bright young life has been extinguished like this. At the same time, Samantha remained in a coma and those around the community held their breath, hoping that she would survive. And several weeks after the shooting, reports came out that Samantha woke up and was alert. Initial reports said that she was awake and she was able to track with her eyes and she was aware of her surroundings, but she was unable to communicate at that time. And as of right now, we do know that she has survived and is expected to live but we don't know her official current status. As of March, the Critical Chaos Facebook group, who again was the band that Steven was in, they shared the following updates. She has been moved to stable condition. She is in and out. They have taken her off the ventilator. She can squeeze your hand when you place it in her hand. Her eyes are open, but she is nonverbal. This is such amazing progress. More to come. By April 25th, the band shared their last update on Samantha. They wrote, quote, this will be the last update on Stephen Kane's daughter, Samantha. We will need to let them heal and appreciate all of everyone's help and concerns and those who have contributed to both Steve and his son and his surviving daughter from this terrible tragedy. So here it goes. Samantha is doing very well. They took out her trach. She has all faculties. She is walking around and calls her Aunt Wanda, Steve's sister, almost daily. Again, not to be mean, but unless the family asks us to help, we will no longer update Samantha. Just know she is on a wonderful path to recovery and a long road of healing. She was also shot in the head with the rest of the family members, so she probably suffered from very severe head trauma and is probably going to have a long road to recovery to gain, you know, meaningful function back. But I really do hope that she is able to communicate again and that she makes a full recovery. We know that she's walking around. We know that she's calling her Aunt Wanda. So I really hope that, you know, she has meaningful communication and that she's able to get to the point that she was at before this tragedy happened. I hope she's able to go back to school. I hope that, you know, she's able to go on and, you know, move on with her life and do what she wants to do with her life and her career. Police also say that they're hopeful that, you know, they're able to talk to her because they're still investigating this incident and they're hoping that Samantha can fill them in on any holes that they may be missing with this case. Again, whether there's things that were going on behind the scenes with Teresa, with her mental health, with anything else that was going on that they should know about that can help them, you know, come to a conclusion as to how this happened and why it happened. But unfortunately, that is all of the information that I have on this case. I know this was a very short case. This is still a very ongoing case. And if there is any more information that comes out, I will keep you all updated. I do want to know if Teresa was doing something behind Steven's back or if she was spending money that she shouldn't have been spending or if she wasn't budgeting how she was supposed to or if there was something else going on behind the scenes that caused the family to have these financial issues because Otherwise, I cannot comprehend why she felt the need to hide this from her family and then murder them. She could have just talked to Steve and told them that whatever he's bringing in isn't enough. That seems like a hard conversation, but if there's nothing else that's going on and it's simply an issue of just, we don't have enough coming in to, you know, pay for everything that we need to pay for, 
it's easier than killing everybody and going to jail or killing yourself. It just makes absolutely no sense. So I think personally, I think that there has to be more going on here because again, it just does not make any sense. This truly is a tragic, awful, awful case. Even the investigators on this case are in total shock. They said that they saw no sign of anything like this. Yeah, a lot of people came out and said that Teresa was controlling. She may not have had the best communication with the family. She may have been a very strict parent, but nobody saw anything like this happening to the family. Police said that plenty of people deal with these types of financial issues and police try to do what they can to provide the families with help if they can. So they genuinely do not know why this horrible situation happened the way that it did. And I agree, this monster stole three lives and gravely affected the life of another, all because she didn't want her family to find out about the foreclosure and eviction, and I have no idea why. But like I said, if there is more information that comes out about this, I will let you guys know, but because Teresa has shot herself and she is also deceased. I don't know if investigators are going to put forth the effort to investigating the case further to see what was going on behind the scenes or if they already have done that and they're just not sharing it with us or if they're just going to close the case and let Samantha make her recovery and, you know, move on to another case. I honestly don't know what they're going to do, but I hope they find out more and I hope they let us know because I think there was so much more going on behind the scenes than just this foreclosure and her deciding to kill her entire family and herself. Again, I do think that if this was just a situation of not bringing in enough money that she should have just sat down and talked to the family about it and figured out what to do rather than killing them. I mean, you can always get a new house. You can always find somewhere else to live. You can start working. You can do something. But ending the lives of your family over something like this, it just makes no sense. So I think there had to be more going on behind the scenes, whether it was something that Teresa was doing, whether she found out that Steven was doing something. I have no idea, but I really hope the police let us know. But yeah, that is all of the information that I have for today's video. I know this was a very short one, but I wanted to make sure I covered it because again, it was a recent case. And honestly, it's just mind-boggling how this entire thing happened. So now I want to know what your guys' thoughts are. Do you think that Teresa caused the financial strain and that is why she didn't want the family to find out? Do you think that there was something else going on? Do you think that Steven had something else going on that she found out about? Why do you think Teresa did this? Do you think it truly was just they were in financial strain and she was mentally ill and she just thought this was the only way out? Let's discuss any thoughts that you have in the comments down below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Make sure you check out my Facebook page and follow my Twitter and Instagram. All will be linked down below as well. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to go ahead and fill out the Google form that I have listed down below as well. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!